You know, every year here at Arches Garage, I deal with a lot of tires. Um, all different kinds of tires, but mostly I'm a small engine shop. So I do a lot of small engine tires, you know, from everything from, well, really from wheelbarrows all the way to, I got this nice um, snow machine that I just went over and it's having some issues with its tires. Every year it's kind of the same thing and really doesn't matter whether it's cars or these small engine equipment. But today we're going to talk about flat out and this is a product that I like. So, and this is something that I buy. So this is not a paid promotion. It's actually what I like to use. And there's a couple of different formulas. So stay tuned. And I'm going to make some recommendations to what I think uh, I know works for me. And I've been using it for a couple of years now. So about three years of experience. And I figured I'd share it with you guys. So stay tuned. Now, as I mentioned that there are different formulas, and I like to use, there are two formulas that I've been experimenting with, so that's what I'm gonna to speak to. So let's take a look at these two different formulas. Now, this formula is a little bit different. Um, this one is what they call the Sportsman formula. And this is their general formula, right? This is their the all around, um, what do they call it here? I don't see the name on it, but when I bought it, um, when I bought it, it was, it was, uh, it's like the general formula for, for just about everything. Uh, bicycles, cars, tires, wheelbarrows, things, things of that nature. Now, I mentioned this on my live stream the other day, um, this past weekend, actually, and I talked a bit about it. So I'm just going to go over it again really fast. So after about, this is about three years. So there was, I started off with their regular formula. And it comes in this nice bag now, so you can actually squeeze it, and which is kind of neat. And I, I definitely liked it. What I find it's really useful for is bead issues. You know, if you if your bead is not sticking right and you know mounted right, um, on this machine over here, just to back up, the one that you just got a little peek on, and I'll, I'll roll some B roll here. The tires are in excellent shape, so it's it's there's no holes in it. All right, I checked it with soap and everything. It's it's the bead, okay? Um, I popped the bead. When I, got it, when I got the machine, the bead was popped already. And I checked inside for junk. There was no junk in there. I cleaned it off with some soapy water that I like to use, you know, to set beads and all that and check. And I wiped in there all around the bead and, and the bead area on the rim and on the, you know, the tire itself. Finished up with the tissue, you know, white paper towel. I didn't see anything. It's clean. Put it back together again, pressurized it up, and it's leaking. So I'm going to put this stuff in. But what I find is, now, yes, you can use a bead sealer. Yeah, that works pretty good. Uh, but what I find is that this stuff solves the problem. Now, if you have a weepy tire or something that, um, you know, maybe that it's getting a little old and it's leaking from a few spots, or maybe it's got a plug in it or whatever, and that's leaking a little bit, try this. Okay, I, this is what I find works to solve those problems. Yeah, you can you can bust the bead and, and clean the bead up and, um, you know, put actual bead sealer on. And that is going to assure that you're going to get a, a, a good, you know, solid, you know, connection there. And it's not going to leak. If the, if the rim is rusty or something else is going on or the tire is getting pitted from rust or whatever, you might want to put a tube in. Um, and I do that. Okay, and I have done that more recently because sometimes this stuff just doesn't work. If you're concerned about having something in there, this got Kevlar and everything, but if, you, if you're concerned about maybe rotting the inside of the rim or, or damaging the inside of your tire, well then put a, get another tire or put a tube in, okay? But I'm talking about something to make your life a little bit easier, fellas. It's, it's some of these things, it's just not that important to get that crazy. Let's just get some air in the damn tire and have it hold. Now also, as I mentioned earlier, I'm like, I buy these, okay? So this is not a paid promotion. And uh, uh, lastly, all right, quick story is, <clears throat> now this stuff is a little thicker. It's a little bit of a different formula. And as I mentioned in the live stream, uh, let's say you're out on an ATV trail with your dirt bike or something like that. I see it a lot more with ATVs because if you got like a mud tire and a real knobby and there's big cleats, similar to this, this the tire on here, um, and you, you run over a stick or a bottle or something like that, and you got a major puncture. Maybe you brought a tube, maybe you got the tools, maybe you got another tire. Or maybe you just shove this stuff in there and you drive 
around for a little while and you meet you know you meander your way back to the trailhead or where your, your car is your truck and your trailer and whatever and you deal with it then you throw the tire out you get something different um i was telling a story about the jacobson rider that i had and there was one year where i pulled the thing out at the beginning of the year and dry rot and the sidewall went Psh! i put this stuff in okay the thicker stuff this, this is you know sportsman formula and it is more for like ATVs and, and things of that nature. Build it back up. And when I sold it, all I had to do was add a little bit of air. It was fine. Okay. It actually like healed the tire. It was fine. I didn't want to, I wasn't asking a lot for that machine. It wasn't going to be worth a lot. I wasn't going to put tires on. And the guy that bought it, he was like, I just need to get like a year or two. I just got a house. And the lawn's a little bit big. I, I don't really, I'm not even planning on keeping it that long. Which is kind of sad because I'm like, well, if you don't want it, bring it back. Right, bring it back, and I'll give you a couple of bucks for it because I like the machine. Hopefully, he does because I actually like that machine. So this stuff is what really solved that, and pu big punctures and tears and things that maybe the tire will will stay together. I mean, listen, the tire is coming off your rim, fellas. You got to get a tire, but we're talking about you know making our lives a little bit easier. This thing, I want to push it down the road. I think it's going to snow next week, and I want to make sure that. You know, the worst thing is you go to pull your snowblower out and and it needs air, right? And I'm not talking about after like an entire season and it needs air. I'm talking about like it snowed last week and this week it snowed again, right? And it's not holding air. That's a pain in the ass. So I'm going to do this, right? We'll pop it in. Let's go to the bench real quick. Just want to show you a couple of tips on it. And then I'm going to leave. Actually, I got to move it back to where it was, but I'm going to pull the tire back off and leave it in the shop for a little while. I'm like, but the rest of the day, I'm going to spin it around, or whatever, because I can't not driving around anywhere. You really need to drive around for a while for to get coatings on everything. It's raining out. It's lousy. It's cold. I'm not doing that. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. I was kneading this thing, squeezing it, kneading it, shaking it. We got it. You got to do that. And then when it comes, you just got to break the seal. It's like clips in there. And then we'll pull this piece off here, like so. And shove you in a little bit. You know what? Let me, let me lift the camera up a little. So it's like a perfect scenario. This, this thing's in nice shape. It's Monday morning. I'm tired. I'm cranky. It's cold, right? I don't want to be fooling around with this thing. And, you know, I, I'm done. Right? I did a nice job on the machine, but I don't want to create, you know, an issue here. For the customer and whoever buys it and just want to solve the problem so when when i checked it i sprayed you know my soapy water and everything i could see it was coming from one of the beads i don't know it was probably this one i cleaned you know checked it all out and everything and it was fine i think what happens is when you pump it up what's the pressure on this let's say it's actually a craftsman tire 20 psi when you pump it up you know, 20, a little over 20, you get everything seated, it's fine, right? But it leaks a little bit. And then over the course of about an evening, like a day, as the pressure slowly comes out, at first, right, it'll weep a little bit. You won't see it when you spray with bubbles. But then, like I said, over the course of like a day, maybe the second day, uh, but as it starts to lose a bit of pressure, right, the seal gets lost and and as that happens, it gets worse and worse and worse. Sometimes it could be because the tire is deformed. Um, it just could be a number of reasons. So instead of, you know, aggravating myself, right, I'm just going to, you know, twist this on here and shove that on the hole. I took the valve out, shove this down there and squeeze in. Now this directions, I'm not reading directions, right? I'm tired. I'm crying. I just want to make this go away. I'm going to squeeze a bunch in, right? You don't need a lot. That's fine. Especially this formula, because this formula is thinner. So how I usually handle it is I just put a bunch in, put everything back, I'll fill it up, get it a little, make sure it's a little bit over full. You know, a couple of pounds, nothing much. And then we'll see what it does, right? We'll go, you know, over the course of the evening, I'll come back like tomorrow, whatever, and I'll give you a report. But typically, right, what I find with stuff like this is it's not an issue. Just put a little bit in. See, actually, that bead is not quite seating right, right? I can hear it. It's right here, right? It's just a little bit of an issue. And it's right down here, and that bead is just not seating well right in this area. But it will if you... Right? It will at some point. If I keep fooling with it, 
probably because it got a little bit damaged over there. And sometimes what you can do to get it to seat is you can spray it with a little bit of lube, you know, detergent, and it'll slide up and then seal. But let's see if we can get some of the sealant in that area. Yep, see? I hear it though, but the bead is starting to seat. Yep, it's just starting. A bit more. There it goes. You heard it, right? We'll check it in a minute. Let's see what the pressure is. Needs to go more. All right, 20 PSI is what it should be at, according to the tire. All right, we're not quite there. Yeah, we're a little over 20. Good. We're going to leave it there in a minute, all right? Shake that around. Let me get an actual reading because I'm going to tell you. So 21 or 2 or something, just on the edge. Let's get, see, a little bit came out. You guys see that? A little shiny, right? A little shiny spot right here. All right, let's check that. But since we know where it is, here, you know what? Let's take our tire marker. Since we kind of know where it is, it's right here. I need some new tire markers, some new, you know, paint markers. That's good enough. And they never, never really worked right. I think I got an old set. Let's spray a little scum and jutes on that. And like I said, this tire is in great shape. Okay, nothing, right? There's no bubbles. It's not immediate, right? Tiny little bit, like really nothing. Because if it was leaking, it would be, you know, you guys know, right? If you've ever done this, it's just Dawn detergent, a heavy concentration of Dawn, which I also use for cleaning up things. And and it, it's a, it helps to seat beads. It checks for leaks. But this tie is in mint shape. And that's what I was saying. It's like you see the cleats on them, they're spaced out. Like a lot of ATVs or mud style tires, you're driving on a trail and you, you hit into something or you run something over and it'll go in through here and you'll have a puncture here. And if it's a big puncture, it's this formula, the sportsman formula. If it's more of like a weepy kind of thing, it's this formula that I like to use. And they have another formula too, but I, I don't, I find this is like the overall general purpose and I didn't use a lot either. So what I'll, I'll do is I'm going to go, this tire comes off real easy, right? Maybe your tire is a bit more of a pain in the ass, but this is this happens. You know, I set it up with the one with this on it rather than the bolt on the other end because this is designed to like disengage where you could move this over on a snowblower. You could move it back and forth, and either you could put either you could put this clip on the outside, right, and the tire can free wheel, so it's easy to turn, or you can put it on the inside through the hole on the rim and it engages the tire full time, and you have posi rear. So, yeah, I'm going to go wheel this over into the garage, kind of, or over here, out of my way. And I'll pull the tire off, or I'll spin it around every now and then. You know, that kind of thing. I'll leave it upright so I can play around with it. Make sure that I'm getting it over in the area that I know is a problem. But I'm already seeing that. I don't think it's, I think it's done. Okay? Do that for a little bit. I'll right, we'll be back in a minute. All right, fellas, let's finish up the review. So it's two days later. Uh, yesterday, when I came out, it was flat. Um, so at some point yesterday, I put a little bit more in, and then I left it, the tire, you know, and the rim off of the machine, and I can actually see a little bit where that sort of gluey stuff came out of where it spot that we were having some issues. You could see it, a little bit of sheen, right down here at the bottom. So... And this morning, I checked it. Last night, I was checking it. And just now, I checked it. It was that went down a couple of pounds. So I put a little bit more air in it. And like I said, I left it off. And I've been kind of doing this every now and then. And I can tell there's more product. there was more product in here. I definitely put more product in. Now, I can't hear it moving around. I think it's, it's finally starting to set up. It does take a little while. And really, you got to use the machine. But that's not happening. I'm going to sell it. 
So I'm ready to put this back on. I think overall, not an issue. Now with my big tractor, my Simplicity Sunstar, when I got it, the one tire was kept going flat right away. You know, you fill it up, come back the next day, and it's got almost no air in it. And the other one was leaky. So one of the tires has not given me any more problems. Um, I put some, the, you know, the other product in, um, you know, the thicker stuff that's designed for ATVs. And that has not given me a problem. The one that was giving me a problem, it got to a point where, I guess after about a month or two months, I'd have to check it. It might be down a couple of PSI. So I just put some more of the thinner product in, right? The general universal product in, and we'll see what happens. But it's at a point now, even with my wheelbarrow, it's at a point now where I check it from time to time. Maybe it's a little low. Maybe it's down a couple of PSI. It's not an issue, right? There's some routine maintenance and checks that I do on some of these machines that I have. And I think this will be fine for the customer. What can I say? You know, you could you could take the tire off and put a tube in, right? You could take the tire completely off and see what's going on in there and get a good look. I had one recently where I was, you know, checking out my new tire machine, which I still need to find a spot for in here. And I found that I was putting tubes in because the tires and the rim were just not good enough. But the tread was good. So I put a tube in and I went through two tubes on the third tube. When I went to go put this, you know, the third tube in, I realized I'm like, there's something in the rim that's causing the problem. And most of these rooms, fellas, right, they're made for a you know bead seal type, right? Beaded rims. So there may be some weld snots or something inside. And if you just kind of squeeze a tube in there, there's a good chance that you, what's going to happen to you is what, you know, what happened to me. They weren't made for tubes, and it's not polished and clean in there, and it, it'll pop a tube. It'll it'll damage a tube fairly quickly, and then you'll have a, a problem all over again, like I did. So I had to take everything apart and go in there and sort of, you know, sand and polish any area that I could see where I you know I knew where the hole was. These are just solutions, fellas, and uh, I'm just trying to help out. And hopefully this is uh, is helpful. So if you happen to like a different product. Some kind of goop, you know, it's tire slime or, you know, it's tire slop, right? Anything that you can put in there, uh, a lot of people don't like it because there's potential rim rust. Some of this stuff, I just want to move forward. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching Archer's Garage.